Welcome to part five. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to me once again. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. I'm going to move on to page 11 of Connect One. And we're going to look at mixed messages. So um, mixed messages is where, you know, we're not sure. Um, somebody might be saying one thing with their voice and another thing with their bodies or saying words. But when I, I don't know if I can trust the words. Um, and being a literal communicator obviously complicates this for us. Um, so let's have a look at what's on page 11. So we talk about mixed messages. We talked about showing feelings in our voice earlier. This is called tone. Tone means showing how we feel in our voice. Not everyone does this, but lots of people do. And again, we're not saying everybody does this. And if a child doesn't, making them feel bad, we're just saying this is how lots of people communicate and others don't. Um, when we say what we mean, then our feelings are usually the same as our words. When people speak in a different way, their words may not match their feelings in their voice. And that can be super confusing. Sometimes someone might say, I'm fine. Their words are telling us they're fine, but their tone might sound sad. So really they're saying they're not fine, or they're saying they are fine when they're not. Again, super confusing. Sometimes people might ask us how we are and we might say, really excited to go see the new movie. This then confuses them because they're not expecting us to answer the question with how they're really, how we're really feeling. They're expecting us to say, fine. Can you think of times when you got mixed messages and it was confusing? So here we're opening up the conversation. We're finding out what is confusing the child because sometimes, um, <laughs> definitely from my own experience just would be nodding along and pretending I knew what someone meant instead of actually asking them um, or verifying or checking in um, so talk to the child about you know what are the things they find confusing and that's I suppose you know I talked about giving specific questions you can break that question um, into more specifics yourselves like um, is there times when I do things or say things that confuse you are there times in school when maybe a friend or someone in your class or your teacher um, says something that doesn't make sense to you immediately and takes a lot of time to figure out or you don't know which message to trust? And, you know, ask them that, ask them the, con the, the you know, give them the context, I suppose, to this as well. Um, I've given one example where people say they're fine, but they're not. You could give more examples, talk about things that you found confusing as a kid or still do as an adult and see, um, you know, and I think that's that's huge when you're using these books is to share your own experiences as well and your vulnerability. Um, in my experience working with kids, um, you know, if you show your vulnerability, you're not perfect, you make mistakes, you get things wrong too. You also struggle with these things. It really helps kids to open up. So, um, or maybe you answered someone and they got confused because that can happen to us obviously as well. We re say something and we don't get the response that we, you know, that maybe we think is justified. And then we end up confused or hurt. So what can you do if you're confused? You can ask someone what they really mean. And that's pretty straightforward. And that works really well if the other person just answers. But sometimes then people think that the, child isn't um, being genuine or is asking a question, I don't know, for some other reason or being cheeky. And when that happens, then that's really awful because the child is just building up the courage to, um, you know, communicate in this way and to um, spend less time being confused. So this is where I suppose you come in. And this is why using these books, I suppose, gives you information to do more because Let's say um, you're, you know, a teaching assistant or an SNA and you're using this book with, with your, the autistic child you're working with. You can then take that information maybe to the teacher, to the rest of the staff. You could maybe see how we could um, work on this as a group, as a school, within the classroom, all of that. Um, and then we ask the child, can you think of anything else you can do? Because children have wonderful ideas and wonderful ways. Um, and that's why I've left space for that in all the books throughout, because um, we don't have to always instruct children. We can really, you know, kids are amazing. And I've learned so much 
um, working with kids, uh, you know, for, for two decades. Um, their little imaginations and their minds and the way they think just is so refreshing. And we need to provide space for that as well. Um, let the kids come to us with their ideas. And, uh, you know, when they do accept them and, you know, talk, wow, that's amazing. And I never thought of doing that. And how would that work for you? And have you ever tried it? And of course, we can find out as well that sometimes kids have all of these ideas in their heads, but don't try them out. There's, there's a lack of confidence or a fear of maybe doing these things as well. And there, that's something that you can support with them as well. And what can you do if, you ans if your answer is confusing to someone else? So let's look at that. Can you tell them you are very direct and you mean what you say, you know? And do you understand that's how you communicate? And can you do that? Is it something you'd like to do? And what can other people do so they can understand you better? And this is what neurofarming means. It means that it's not up to the autistic child to be doing all the work. We understand that we have a different way of communicating, but we also have to understand that the people we're meeting don't understand that communication maybe sometimes, but also there's a mismatch. So often we're kind of misjudged or misinterpreted and other people have to work on that because we, we can't, I suppose that's not something that we can actually do <laughs> fix. Um, and we shouldn't have to, let's be honest, particularly if you're a small little person. So again, you know, it's allowing children the space to talk about the things that they find confusing. And some of the information you'll get from this is, is just invaluable. And then I would say, you know, um, obviously, you know, the child is learning from this, but so are you. And, and take notes and see how you can explore these maybe afterwards with the child. So thanks again for tuning in today. And I'll see you in part six.